Hello and good afternoon everybody. SKG here with a video I was waiting to make but I actually can't put it off even longer because the more I think about it the more excited I get because it's coming in like what's today 11th is coming in like nine days. We have nine days from today separating us from the new DLC the secrets of Dr. Wu. And I can't wait until I make um, another video with me playing the challenge mode to talk about this. This is some this is some good stuff. Now we all knew that we was going to get some deal some paid DLC eventually, but this is something I was not expecting. We're getting three hybrids and two brand new dinosaurs. The two brand new dinosaurs are True Don and Oloro Titan. Our hybrids are Stegoceratops, Ankylodocus, and Spinoraptor. And I, I'm, I like the three hybrids, but I'm more so impressed with Spinoraptor and Stegoceratops, with the latter being the most impressive to me. As the, the way the Stegoceratops horns look, that's just, they're like, they look so long, like they're uberly long and like they could fuck up a lot of shit. And for some reason, I do expect these hybrids, especially the Stegoceratops. Well, we all know the Spinal Raptor is going to be vicious off back, but I expect the, um, the Stegoceratops to actually be kind of aggressive, you know? And I mean towards herbivores, not just carnivores, towards herbivores, park guests, it's like... This creature needs to stay solitary, like absolutely solitary, unless you mess with his genes and whatnot. But what I wanted to do was real quick get into what we have right here. Um, well, Frontier, you know, it's about the update for it's coming with patch 1.5, I believe it was a 1.4.5. Well, I'm about to read it, and we're about to find out. So stay tuned, everybody. Okay, so before I get into the DLC and my little speculations, I'm going to let the trailer play, even though I'm sure you all seen it a lot by now. I'm just going to let the trailer play, and then we're going to get to talking. To some people, what I do is indistinguishable from a miracle. The complexities involved in recreating life millions of years expired, unfathomable. In the right hands, genetic modification is the most powerful tool ever created. Like any tool, it requires skill to wield. And when used correctly, it creates art. There are no miracles here. There is science. And my experiments are simply the next step. Why imagine the possibilities when I can make them a reality? Evolution is just the start. Okay, so going into this, Frontier says what we're about to do is we're going to discover the sequence of Dr. Wu. So, says coming this, not coming, launching this November 20th for PC, PlayStation, and Xbox One. The new premium downloadable content pack for Frontier Universal features all new locations, dinosaurs, challenges, and a brand new Jurassic World story. Starring B.D. Wong as geneticist Dr. Henry Wu, which is cool because it, it gives you 
a bit more interaction with Doctor Wu. Now, what Jurassic World is done is give you more Doctor Wu. Because in the novel for Jurassic Park, you have more depth to Doctor Wu. He wasn't just some character that was there for one scene and then you never see him again. No, you. I haven't personally read the novel, but from watching Clayton Fioriti, Fioriti, I'm sorry if I butchered your name, Clayton, if you ever see this. I apologize. But from watching Clayton's videos, we get to see and understand more, a little bit more of Dr. Wu and where he's coming from. And it's portrayed in Jurassic World and in the in, in this game, Jurassic World Evolution, as Dr. Wu is this man that needs to innovate. He needs to create. And he feels like if he doesn't do it, somebody will. He wants to be known for the man that created this. Like his creation, the Indominus Rex. If that didn't go south, he would have took the credit for all that. He wanted to be known for the man that created the Indominus Rex. The man that created the Indoraptor. The man that's like innovating not just prehistoric life, but life itself moving forward. He's basically saying, look at what I've done with evolution. He's like, I've taken it. I've, um, what's the word? I can't, he's, basically, he's, he, he's the one that wants to play God, more so than Hammond. And, let's see here. It says that, the it says, Secrets of Dr. Will Unlock's new campaign missions put in players in control of two hidden research facilities on Isla Muerta and Isla Tacaño, where Dr. Henry Wu is developing a new generation of hybrid dinosaurs. Now, what does that tell you? It says two hidden research facilities. Meaning, while we was playing through the main campaign, Dr. Wu was doing his own thing. And when you think about it, when you was on Takanyo, that's when he was doing that raptor research, when he wanted to test the stress levels of the raptor, and you had to put it alongside the Diplodocus. And I think Isla Murta is where you did... Do some, you did something with the ankylosaurs. You stress tested, I think, or something like that. Because you did some more stress testing with the raptors and the dilophosaurus there, too. But yeah, now that I think about it, Isla Muerta and Takanya was where Dr. Wu wanted some specific research done. And on both of those islands, I specifically remember the Velociraptor. Okay. So continuing forward, it says players will confront an elevated level of chaos and threat caused by Wu's machinations as they work alongside the doctor and discover new dig sites, facility upgrades, and research opportunities. And going into that, we're getting new locations on the same islands, which is good because this is what I wanted. I wanted more areas on the five deaths to work with and since they're starting with Isla Morta and Takanyo that means we have hope for Montanceros and Isla Sorna I, I exclude Isla Pena because of how small the island is like come on we pretty much got um, on Isla Pena you're pretty much working on all of the island as it is it's like the smallest of the five deaths so I'm not even going to worry about that one especially since it's like tornado heavy but yeah we getting no more open space in Martin Cerros, Muerta, Tacaño, and especially Isla Sorna. That's huge. And if they can do that for those islands, they can do it for the sandbox mode and Isla Nubar. Give us more space to work with different, you know, outliers and outlines and whatnot. That's what I'm looking forward to later on. Now... The new dig sites I'm looking forward to are the dig sites specifically just for Trudon and the Lord Titan. And who knows if they decide to add more dinosaurs, we might get newer dig sites or dig sites that share um, dinosaur fossil space alongside Trudon and Lord Titan. I'm expecting Trudon and Lord Titan to have some um, dig sites found where the other dinosaurs were. Like, you know, I can't specify where Trudon or Lord Titan was discovered unfortunately and me posting to be some type of dinosaur expert myself you think I would know that that's what happens when you you fall out of the loop for a while 
But going on, it says Jurassic World Evolution Secrets of Dr. Wu also introduces the herbivore or Laura Titan, as we just talked about, and the venomous True Don to Jurassic World Evolution, alongside three new um, Wu created hybrids the Stegoceratops, the Ankylodocus, and the Spinoraptor. And you see that they say venomous True Don. And it's stated that the True Don is going to have a bite that poisons its victims. So. I'm curious to see how is that going to work. Like, can it just attack anything? Like, if especially if it's in a group. Like, let's say you got five True Dons, right? Well, they and you put them in there with a T Rex. Well, they bite the T Rex and it starts to lose health because obviously they can't kill the T Rex. So they would have to bite and poison it to lower, you know, weaken its health to a point to where they, it just they can kill it. Or it's so sick that the true don't just come and basically eat it alive. And the fact of this is, since it's venomous and has a poisonous bite, you pretty much have to put them in a solitary um, exhibit. Their enclosure specifically needs to be, it just needs to contain just true don. Because if it doesn't, they'll poison the other dinosaurs and then you got to spend money, you know trying to vaccinate them and you you know a whole bunch of other um, chaos theory type stuff are happening but it gets me thinking do you get to research a um a vaccination for it? because something like this warrants its own vaccination truthfully they sh this would be a good concept to include with Dilophosaurus as well because of its spitting venom but that will require it to um to you to change the fact that the lava source can no longer be in a fencing enclosure. It will have to have a concrete enclosure, which makes sense. I mean, that add some you know dynamic to the game. Cause I've been not me, not only me, but this is something that's been I'm sure talked about by everybody else in the community as well. I believe even best in slotting um. Gaming Beaver mentioned how cool it would be if the Dolphin Source could spit at park guests through the fence, making it one of the most difficult dinosaurs to contain early game. So you, it would be best to, um, you know, save Dolphin Source for a late game whenever you unlock the concrete fence, unless you want to take the chance of Dolphin Source spitting at your victims. But then that means you have to probably, I don't know, Dolphin Source opens up a lot of um, ways to contain. For secure, basically in the SCP kind of sense, secure, contain, and protect. The Lava Source opens up so many um, new gameplay elements that could be implemented and capitalized off of the off of this one simple fact that it spits venom. But let's move on. Players can progress through Dress World Evolution Secrets of Doctor Wu missions to unlock new upgrades and research options that can be used throughout the Jurassic World Evolution campaign, including the Indominus Rex's unique camouflage gene, as seen in the 2015's Jurassic World. And that's the highlight right there. And we get Indominus Rex's camouflage gene, which arguably something that should have came out with in the base game, but maybe they did not have time to work on it. Point is, we're getting it now, so there's no need to gripe and harp about it if we if there has been more of that as of late. I don't know. <laughs> I I'm like really absent in like community forums. I'm just now starting to get like to participate in on the community ever since the um, the Jurassic World Lights Commercials Action Fan Film Contest, which I'm eagerly awaiting. Um yeah, I'm just now starting to get in on that. But basically, what what's going to happen with that is Indominus Rex is going to camouflage. Like, for what it seems, it's not going to be random. It says they'll probably do it when it exits the hatchery, um, when it's idle, when it's hunting. That's probably the, the one time I say the camouflage technique will be really active when it's hunting and a few other things. So imagine if it breaks out, right? It, 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 I will expect it to immediately camouflage, making it hard to find. Like so, when Indominus Rex gets out, now it's going to be a pain to keep. 
but that's if you include it with his gene. And I'm going to include it with his gene because I want to see exactly how hard it will be to um, find and contain in Dominus Rex now. But what I am expecting is when it camouflages, you won't be able to see it on the map. When you hit the um, map button, you won't be able to see it when it camouflages. That's cool. And I'm hoping that's, you know, what they do. It says, new campaign missions unlock after players achieve a four-star rating on Isla Moretta. <clears throat> for, for full details on Jurassic World Evolution, Secrets of Dr. Wu, content, visit JurassicWorldEvolution.com. Okay. Now it says that you get these after players unlock the four star rating on Isla Moeta. So basically, you plan through the game, you get to Isla Moeta, you have to four star the island, just like you four star Matt and Sarah to unlock Nublar. So you four star Moeta to start the DLC. So I have to um, check and make sure Isla Moeta is four star because I don't think I did that. It says, also on November 20th, all Jurassic World Evolution players will receive a free game update, which is basically a patch. Introducing an optional day-night cycle to the campaign, new dinosaur grouping and sleeping behaviors, new contracts, and then new large capacity feeders. Alright, so let's talk about this real fast, because this is part of the 1.45 or 1.5 update. Um, I can't really remember. But it's part of the new patch that's coming. And it's um, starting with the dinosaur behaviors. We're getting new dinosaur behaviors, meaning we're finally getting herding or some form of it. They're, and they're getting sleeping behaviors, meaning they get they're, they go to sleep randomly. Like if they're being idle and doing pretty much nothing, you'll, you can catch them sleeping. And if they have a herding mechanic like a group of stegosaurs or gallimimus, then they'll sleep as a group. And they'll drink as a group and they'll feed as a group. That it's a mechanic designed to keep them together and to keep them from wandering off. Because you know how you can have like five stegosaurs and then one or two will probably branch off. And next you know, now they social is falling into the red because now they're too far from the other three stegosaurs that are in the um, enclosure. That's to prevent that from happening. Also. Um, what else did it say? Ch -ch 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 says, okay, grouping, sleeping behaviors. Oh, okay, with the um, herding mechanic, it's also based on rating, as in, similar to the j pox sense as one dinosaur wore the crown. Well, the dinosaur in the highest rating is the group leader. Like, let's say you have Pachycephalosaurus. I can't remember what rating a Pachy has, so let's say you have a, a Pachy with a rating of 50, and then... You have a Pecky with the rating of 55. The rating, the one with the rating of 55 is the group leader. But as their rates go up, or you know, then there's going to be a leadership contest, and the one with the new, the new Pecky with the new higher rating will take over as the group leader. Or maybe the 50 Pecky will challenge the 55 one day, and if it beats him, he now has a higher rating. Of like 60 or something and now he's the group leader which leads me to ask can you um make a packy that's with a, um, a rating of 60 or 65 and you put him in that closure with the group leader with the with the um okay same scenario leader packy of 50 but now you introduce a packy you just incubated his, his level is 60 would that packy automatically challenge the leader pack and become dominant since his rating is 60 that's what I'm thinking will happen um we get new large capacity feeders meaning like it's so you don't have to do that much maintenance on your feeders during the campaign because while they did give us the unlimited feeders for you know sandbox because we don't I mean in sandbox we don't want to constantly mess with the feeders and now I'm really appreciative of that for campaign the feeders while they were less annoying you still had to whenever you grab the jeep you would still had to you know replenish them i stay still say often not quite often but often so now with this larger capacity feeders except for goats the goats <laughs> you know those don't have um giant capacities 
you don't have to worry about feeding them as much again. And last but not least, well, even though we got the new contracts, I kind of forgot what the new contracts were. But I'm assuming it's more stuff alongside of um, making dinosaurs with certain um, genetics. Uh, dinosaurs uh, trying to blow. It mentions something about trying to blow dinosaur ratings through the roof or stuff like that. But moving on to the last part it is the optional day night cycle, meaning that the islands will now okay first off i'm gonna say that the day night cycle you have to unlock it by i think it said four starring the islands either four starring or five starring no you five star the islands to change them from night to day but if you four star them i think they then you get the cycle and basically what that is instead of having to click and choosing which day and mode of day you want dusk day or night the islands now cycle through them, which will be welcome to see as I play through my challenge mode on Jurassic mode. And since I four starred Martin Saros, uh, that I'll, I'm gonna test that out there just to see what it how it looks and everything, because I want to see if it if there's in between cycles. Does it just go from day to dust then to night, or does it have an in between cycle where you get a different array of like colors, you know? Something to bring the game alive. Um, now I do have a brief, some brief words about the hybrids. Just some brief words. Okay, so my thoughts on the hybrids are they're pretty simple. Like, cause at first I thought we weren't going to get any more hybrids outside of Indominus Rex and Indoraptor. I thought we was strictly, you know. I guess staying what I want to say is movie canon as possible as the game possibly could. So I wasn't expecting to see Ankylodocus, Spinoraptor, or Stegoceratops, especially since those are owned by Ludia, which I'm guessing means Frontier asked Ludia for permission to use these dinosaurs. Now I'll especially I'll, I'll mm, okay. What I'm trying to say is. It's debatable on Stegoceratops because Stegoceratops briefly appeared in Jurassic World. You saw that dinosaur on a monitor as one of the hybrids Dr. Wu was planning. So that's arguable if they had to ask Ludia for permission for that because, you know, they're the one that's been doing a big hybrid blowout for the um, mobile app, the mobile app version of Jurassic World, the game. So I believe they had to ask for permission to even use Ankylodocus or Spinoraptor. Probably not since they look different. Technically, I don't think they did since they look different. All three of them look drastic, drastically different than the, um, than their Ludia counterparts. Whereas Spinoraptor actually looks 10, maybe even 100 times better than the, his Ludia counterpart. And I'm, hope, I'm trying to see what side is going to be. Like, is it going to be a big dinosaur? Is it going to be small? The point I'm trying to emphasize is we've already seen a small spinal raptor. Only due to like the animation limitations that the models in the game suffer from. So, I don't want to see a small spinal raptor. From the looks of it, it looks like it's going to be medium or large. I think medium would be the right place to go. Something around the size of like Carnotaurus or Metricanthosaurus. But just a little bit bigger because it's still part spinal. Um, back to Stegoceratops. The most interesting looking one to me. I want to go back to why I think it should be aggressive. Because... I've always had this belief in my head that Triceratops was an aggressive herbivore. Now, it also could be, you know, aggressive un unless it's not aggressive unless provoked. But I think for what we're dealing with, that Stegoceratops should be aggressive and it should be the reason why we're getting these new genes. Like, you can. Part of the update is you getting these new genes where you, ooh, I'm sorry, you can adjust a dinosaur's comfort zone, meaning 
how much forest it'll need, how much grassland it'll need, its population it'll need, and its social it'll need. So that'll be a good reason for we need the genes if Stegoceratops, which I believe is the first hybrid we're going to make, is for some reason naturally, unnaturally aggressive for a herbivore. Because you believe me, mixing two herbivores together and make this, this, this tank of a dinosaur that's still somehow docile like it's, it's um, DNA donors. But no, you just mix together a Triceratops and a Stegosaurus and now what you've got is a herbivore that's potentially as dangerous as any carnivore that you ever created for your park islands. Now let's move into Spinoraptor. Because I want to see if fight the Indominus Rex, okay? <laughs> I've already started putting in my head matchups of okay, since we got the T-Rex versus um, since we got the T-Rex versus Spinosaurus battles, which hybrid is now stronger, the T-Rex Raptor hybrid or the Spino Raptor hybrid? Nor is it the Raptor Raptor hybrid. <laughs> the in the short thing about the end raptor, which is confused the hell out of me, is the fact that it's raptor on top of raptor because Indominus Rex is fusion between Velociraptor and T Rex, Giganotosaurus, Rugops, Carnotaurus, and a whole host of others. And to make an Endoraptor, all they did was throw in a lot more raptor. <laughs> so basically, you got a Spino Raptor. A Tyrannoraptor, which is Indominus Rex. And then you got Indoraptor, which is a Raptor Raptor. <laughs> but I'm wondering, like, will they have specific new animations? Like, is there a certain, um, will Stegoceratops have a different kill animation? Will Spinoraptor have a unique kill animation? You know, like how Indominus got a kill animation for sauropods and how Indoraptor has a unique kill animation with um, the Velociraptors and the like. But these, those are just my little small speculations. And I'm not going to talk too much about Ankylodacus because it was the least underwhelming. I don't know why, but it looks kind of derpy to me. Maybe, I don't know, maybe the growing me like the Indominus did, maybe it won't. And don't they, I can hope it do, will be, it can attack, it has an Ankylosaurus tail. So, I'm hoping it can at least engage in combat. Because it has a long whip-like tail that ends with the Ankylosaurus's club, so. Maybe we'll finally get a sauropod that can fight. <laughs> and that's the next update that needs to happen, actually. But I digress, and that's pretty much all I got to say for now. And with that, I bring this lengthy discussion or slash news update to a close. <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to playing this all with you all when it releases on November 20th, which is next Tuesday, I believe. Um, yeah, yeah, it's next Tuesday. We're going to test these hybrids out. going to see, sorry, we're going to see what trouble Dr. Wu got us in, how we're going to get out of it, and do as we always do. So, with that being said, this is SKG signing out. Have a good night, y'all. Peace.